Welcome back to Nightcast. Face masks have been part of our lives for nearly a year now. Can you believe it? Of course, since the pandemic began. Health officials say they are the simplest way to help prevent the spread of the coronavirus. But one St. Paul startup has developed an antiviral mask that the company says is capable of killing the virus. Richard Reeve tells us more about it and what viral experts are saying. Could these face masks I think it's a game changer. Make a difference in the fight against COVID-19. The mask is, uh, we basically created a, a new textile uh, that has antiviral properties. Scientists and researchers at St. Paul-based Claros Technologies say yes. You've got the best performance that's on the market. It kills 99.9% .9 plus of bacteria and coronaviruses. That heady claim from a startup company just two years old. Claros began as a spin-off business from the University of Minnesota in 2019, receiving a grant from the U.S. Defense Department. We started partnering with the Department of Defense, for example, developing functional textile solutions for different military-grade applications. And it was from that work that the antimicrobial, antiviral functionality was born. Then the pandemic hit. The Claros team, about 10 people, pivoted their research to stopping the spread. We wanted to build the mask based on science. Abdinur Abbas, co-founder of Claros, is also an associate professor at the U. He says the company's Log3 mask not only kills the virus, but also blocks viral droplets from reaching the wearer, and the wearer's droplets from other people. When you use the regular masks, you are transmitting the virus when you touch the mask, you are transmitting the virus when you dispose it, or when, when you touch surfaces. Claros says their mask is different in several ways. The company says three fabric layers, each with a different thread count and pore size, are able to block most droplets the size of coronavirus aerosol. Claros technology directly grows reactive nanoparticles on and within materials. Claros also developed a process it calls press coating. A proprietary zinc solution is infused into a fabric, then heated to form zinc nanoparticles, a thousand times smaller than a human hair. The company says the particles, now trapped in the fabric, won't leach out even after 100 washings. The zinc, harmless to humans, but deadly to the virus. The thing with zinc is over time, as it's exposed to humidity or you know water that's in our breath, um, it will release ions. And these ions are what will actually target these, you know, the virus or bacteria or other microbes, and that's what will kill them. Claros explains it this way. Those ions are zinc atoms that become positively charged by moisture. They're attracted to the coronavirus's protective envelope called a capsid and the spike proteins the virus uses to attack healthy cells. You can think of these as almost little, little arrows or little daggers that are going to punch through this envelope and expose the virus. KSTP medical expert Dr. Arkel Giorgio says metals like zinc have an electrical charge. That pull, like a magnet, it pulls on the virus itself and it pulls so strongly, like a magnet, that it busts apart the capsid. In the process, she says, the capsid and the spike proteins are destroyed. It's like cutting your skin, right? You would bleed. So when you break apart the capsid, it's going to destroy whatever's inside of the virus itself. And that's how it causes viral death. Claro says those zinc atoms also bind to proteins in the virus's RNA genetic material and changes their shape, making the virus inactive. The company says the Log3 mask can do all of this within 10 minutes. Does this technology work? Does it kill the virus? Yes. We spoke with Hamada Abubak and Sagar Goyal, virus experts at the University of Minnesota. So we tested them in my lab. This report documents their peer review of the Log3 mask's performance. For testing, we used a coronavirus of pigs uh, called TGE. The U doesn't have the facilities to test for COVID-19, but both scientists say the TGE virus, the surrogate, is genetically similar enough to make this a valid test. And if we are able to kill the surrogate, my considered opinion is that we can kill COVID-19 too. According to the report, the scientists compared fabric swatches embedded with the nanoparticles with those that were not. They exposed the samples to the TGE virus for 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 
and one hour. So we found that the treated samples as compared to the untreated ones uh, are uh, eff effective for um, inactivating the virus. In other words, they say, the nanoparticle treated fabrics neutralized almost all the TGE virus in 10 minutes. We could see a reduction in the virus by 99.9% .9 or even more. But what about those nanoparticles holding up after 100 washings? The real question is whether or not the nanoparticles are sort of are resilient in the fiber itself when you wash it how long are those nanoparticles effective in that fabric? Abubak and Goyle say they did multiple viral tests on samples provided by Claros, although they say they didn't know how many times they were pre-washed. Actually, we did or repeated this work about six times uh, in six replicates in different days, and they gave the same uh, efficacy. The scientists say during their tests, the zinc remained intact, both men say they believe the mask works. If there are, let's say, a thousand virus particles are deposited on your mask, they should uh, be killed in about 10 minutes. Abba says he's making all the testing data available to the public so people can check the studies themselves. I think it's a great technology. Perhaps the happiest about this, outside of the Claros team, is Mike Miller. We do all types of different, different types of textile products. When the pandemic hit, Miller was worried about keeping his Minneapolis-based company, the Airtex Group, running and his 85 employees working. We wanted to make sure that our people here had work to do. And when they were closing down all the businesses, uh, we felt it was essential to be an essential business. So last April, Miller pivoted to making PPE, including making the majority of masks for Claros and operating the press coating process. These types of masks that you see around here that I'm wearing, uh, one will come off the line every 10 or 15 seconds. Claros won't give us exact numbers, but says the company has sold tens of thousands of Log3 masks since an initial rollout in December, a product that few people would even have thought about a year ago. When COVID hit, uh, number one, we wanted to do something for um, the people. It's the right thing to do, and it's a good thing, and it's good for people. So that's what we're really all about. Now, Clara says it's working on a plan to combine its Log3 mask with an N95 mask. The last for the FDA to approve that mask is a medical device. The company says it's donating thousands of what they're making now to Minnesota shelters and senior centers. Lindsay. Well, it sounds amazing, Rich. How much do these potentially game-changing masks cost, though? Yeah, yeah, three different models. They cost between $20 and $39. All right. For what it promises, that sounds like a bargain. We'll see. Rich, thank you so much.